Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show, home improvement and maintenance tips from the pros. This episode, Sharpen Up, skills to help you sharpen your tools. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help save you time, money, and aggravation. This edition's entitled, Sharpen Up, skills to help you sharpen your tools. To help me explain, I'm here with my ever cheerful co-host and old buddy John. John, what have you been working on this week? <laughs> hey, Larry. Yeah, well, you know, it's been uh, just uh, the ongoing, the ongoing handyman type of work, uh, as you as you know, as, as well as what you've been doing. Um, you know, toilets, faucets. Been doing a little bit of electrical work. Did some plumbing work the other day too. Yeah, I had to uh, actually unsnake a toilet. I had to snake a toilet the other day. That was. Well, very pleasant. <laughs> it's funny. I did. Well, it's fi- good to hear. <laughs> it's, good, it's good. I got paid to snake a toilet. Yeah. Uh, I actually, it's it's kind of a funny story. So years and years ago, I worked for a company that sold um, jetting equipment, and so I still have my gloves from that job. And these gloves are like this really super heavy duty um, rubber, and they go all the way up to my elbows. And every time I put them on, I just think of me being a proctologist. That's all yeah. I ever think. <laughs> you down on the you down on the ranch and the cattle. That's right. Yep, reaching in there. Anyway, yeah, so, sorry, uh, I yeah. digress. So um, we were talking. We actually got an email yes. from Australia, and it's from Sammy Dakin. I think it's Dakin. Anyway, um, Sammy asked us a question about sharpening tools, but mostly he wanted to know about sharpening drill bits and chisels. So we thought that we would do. We'll probably you know we're going to be doing a whole show on sharpening some of your tools, the tools that need to be sharpened, which includes drills, chisels, knives. Um, we'll maybe talk about a brush axe or two or maybe sharpening an axe, but that kind of, it all, it all is very, very similar. So I thought that that's where we, what we would talk about today. And um, I wanted to talk to you, John, largely because you have the background in aviation and you have an AMP. Uh, or ha- Do you still have your AMP certification? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So folks, that's air, air plant air airframe and power plant so john is uh, able to work on airplanes and and he worked in worked for eastern airlines a million years ago in the shop and you were telling me stories about sharpening drill bits so i wanted to turn it over to you and and have or i'll ask questions because i have my simple way of sharpening drill bits which we'll get to probably close to the end but i wanted you to tell some stories about well, sharpening drill bits I, larry you know i know that you, there's there's all kinds of of uh other types of tools to help you sharpen drill bits these days. And I know that you've got one of them and I don't disagree with that at all. I think these are, you know, we never had that, um, back in those days, <clears throat> there were some angle, uh, type of, um, tools that you could lay on your, on the bench grinder. So basically I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start from the beginning. <clears throat> you got a, you got a nice new tool, a, a, ch- uh, a drill bit, that has become dull. <clears throat> now, one thing I will say that when you go and you do sharpen a drill bit, just know that the coating on those drills that that's going to be gone on the on the on the tip of that drill. Right. Like if so it's if a you're nitride, buying, yeah, nitrides or cobalt or titanium right. or all of that, you're going to grind are, all that off. That's you're going to you're going to wind up grinding it off. Now, <clears throat> for most of us, most of us, we're not drilling through real difficult material we're drilling through mild steels uh aluminum copper wood um but you know in in a, in a sense of you might run into some difficult places in a let's say that you're working on your car <clears throat> you might have broken a bolt and you might have to try to drill that bolt out so you will need a drill that can handle handle that <clears throat> so that drill might get dull, and I will tell you that it's a it's a bit of an art form to do this freehand. And I learned from somebody that was uh, that was in well, I was working with at the time. I was in the International Association of Machinists, and they taught me how to grind drills. And you know, it's usually a drill is uh, somewhere around 138 degrees, 135 degrees, or 118 degrees. 
Um, it's, so so explain know, that to our listeners. Yeah, explain so, what so the difference is and drill, why. Right. When you, when you look at a drill, you'll notice that it has two flutes on both sides, and then there's a cutting edge that runs up and it spirals up the shaft. Um, but also at the very point of the drill is the chisel point. And this is this is um, something you need to keep in mind. Of there is the dimensions of both flutes on both sides, the lips of this uh, that meet that chisel point. And that chisel point, if you if you take that, it needs to be centered. And each flute needs to be um, the exact same uh, length on each side, as well as the same angle to each other. Okay, if you're following me, okay. So they need to be symmetrical, is what you're they saying. They need to be some exactly. They need and the to be chisel symmetrical. point needs to be right in the center of the drill. Right, and it will be if both of them are the same. This this the, the same dis, uh, the same length on yeah. both sides. So talk a little if, bit. Just just explain the angle a little bit. So you have 118. You have 135. What what are the differences and what are they used well, for? Well, one is one is you know you can drill different types of materials. You, usually when the, when the point is a little bit more uh, pronounced, you know you can go into a, a harder steel uh, where. You know, you're going to be drilling a little bit slower. You know, you're going to be lu using lubricants, things like that. But um, and then when you have the other type of points that might be a little bit more flat or flattened out, you know, you can use it for wood cutting and things like that. It's easier to handle. Um, it's faster. So there's there's different types of of angles. Now I will tell you that going through, and I think you and I talked about earlier, was I going through plexiglass? Okay, that's a you know that's something when you when you drill through it, you're going to wind up with on a, on a, with a, a a drill that has a very uh, pronounced tip on it. That you're going to chip the plexiglass going through it when you start it. I'm sure a lot of people out there listening to us have done that. You you chip it on the way in, you chip it on the way out, and um, so we used to flatten that tip out a lot so that when you're cutting glass or you're cutting uh, plexiglass that you're really just not so aggressively biting into that material. So anyways, getting back to a regular drill, it might be 135 degrees, 118 degrees, <clears throat> you know, putting that on a, on a grinder. Now I'll just kind of walk you through it is that the grinder needs to be dressed. Okay. When I say dress that it's that, that the wheel has, has been, uh, you know, use a diamond cutter to make the wheel flat and 90 degrees and now you're ready to put the, t the tool rest very close to that wheel because you don't want that drill to fly it you know get sucked in there yeah i thought dress was when you put a skirt on it but anyway whatever well you might Larry. <laughs> you might and then i know you're doing selfies with it yeah of course stuff. right hey i dressed my drill there you go but uh yeah <laughs> So I you know you you put the you put the drill on there to 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 the to that angle and now you can measure that angle okay measure the angle with a with a protractor to the wheel and maybe even make a mark on the tool rest so that you know that you're 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 holding it at the right at that right angle at that correct angle and you're going to have to take it and it, and I would say that if you've never done this before you've got to practice just take an old drill and just keep practicing. You'll get the hang of it where now you're going to be able to hold it with both hands and be able to work that thing at that angle on both sides. And then you've got the, let's call it the leading edge of the drill where that it bites into the material. But now you've got a trailing edge on the back that needs to be um, cut back so it doesn't get in, 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 in the way of the, 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 the leading edge. So that the material can get out of there and spiral out, and you'll get very good at this and make sure that that chisel point on that drill is 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 created in a way that it's not going to walk all over the place. You'll get the hang of it. Just know that when you do grind it, that the flute all the way to the chisel point needs to be uh, uh, ad addressed and 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 ground so that the at the at the the chisel point. That those that the flute on both edge edges that are close to that are actually doing cutting work too. So I know this is a little difficult to to talk about like over over a radio show, but if you if you do dress these up and 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 
and move and, and move that 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 uh, that that drill bit in such a way where you can actually rotate it back, and you'll cut you'll make a you'll make a really nice dressed drill. So it's like I said, it's a little tough to talk about this, but I think you'll, you're getting the the idea of how this thing can happen. Can I tell you how I do it? Yes, I have two methods. So one is I went down and I bought a thing called the Drill Doctor, and I know there's multiple uh, versions of of these types of tools, but this is a jigging tool basically, and it's a jig, and you put your drill bit in there, and you put it into the depth gauge, and you set the depth gauge, and you put you turn the machine yep. on, and you put it in there, and you turn this little thing, and voila, it comes out with a 135 degree angle, and it's perfect, and it takes about I don't know 10 seconds per drill until it stops, until you stop hearing grinding, and it's basically done. Yeah, it, and and not like I said. Um, you know, back in the, back in the day, we never had those things. And, <laughs> and if we did, um, let, let's just say that, the, that my union brothers, it was like, uh, no, you're going to learn how to do this. <laughs> 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 you're going to learn how to do this. So. so I, so, you know, in my case, the question was really was this simple. It's like, I can't remember what I paid for this thing, but it was, it wasn't inexpensive, yeah, right? They're about, they're about 60 bucks on up to about a hundred bucks somewhere on there. Yeah. And for me, see, so for me, it sits on the truck. So when my drill bits get dull, I just pull it out at the job site and literally sharpen my drills on site. Cause I, it's really, Really, you know, the the advantage of a, of sharpen anything is is that it cuts. It just works better, right? It's designed Absolutely. to actually cut. It's not designed to punch a hole through. Which a dull drill, you can literally punch a hole through it, um, but it's designed to cut. And so, if it's sharp, it cuts. Um, so, doing a cost analysis on it, you know, is kind of a waste of time. But but uh, I do I do I have started buying now. I just buy regular old iron bits because I can actually sharpen them. So I save quite a bit of money on the drill bits themselves, and then I just sharpen them as I go. And then eventually, when they either break or get too sharp, I throw them out. Right. My other technique is to go buy multi packs of the drills I use the most of. So right. I just buy a yeah, boatload like, of well, that's you know, that's exactly right. Eighth inch and, and, drill bits, right? You know, right, and that's exactly right. So for very small drills, you're not going to want to you, you you're not going to resharpen them. Um, uh, believe it or not, just, you can. It's just it's just rarely worth. Yeah, it's the time. just not really worth it it's because they're, the they're cheap. And plus, I'll go back to the fact that we don't we don't in this job, and most people don't drill anything you know like exotic metals like uh, like Inconels and stainless all the time. So you're really not really going through that those type of really tough materials, you know, Never. we're talking about around the house. Yeah. You're not, you're going to run into soft, soft steel, aluminum, copper, you know, and, and of course wood. Right. Things of course. Like that. So but, those are, those are the things, you know, so that's just, that's just what I do. It doesn't mean it's right. It's just what I do. I, um, I would, I, I, I'll say this. I agree with you that for most people out there, a, a drill doctor or something like that is is if you're into sharpening drills and you're doing a lot of that, I think it's I think it's great because they do have little diamond wheels in them that do a great job of doing this. <clears throat> I'm just I'm just talking from the old school perspective. You know, some of the old machinists out there know what I'm talking about. That's and that would be you. So let's talk let's talk about chisels because Sammy wanted to know about doing chisels too. Okay, so so chisels. Um chisels are not really uh, really hard to understand, but I will tell you the tip on this is that the backside of the chisel is the piece that is the part that cuts, if that makes sense. So you've got a chisel and you, you look at the side of it, right? The cross section of it. Yep. And it goes down maybe like 45 degrees or some, whatever the, the degree might be on that, on the chisel. Now, a lot of people will sharpen that chisel, <clears throat> you know, off, off that, uh, you know, off those degrees. Okay. And those you'll sharpen it that way and not and neglect the back, but the back is the really most important. You really want to have the back of that chisel, which is totally flat. Okay. You really want to run a file or something up there or, or dress it down on a, uh, let, let's say a, um, a water stone, um, that the back is, is perfectly, you know, perfectly flat. So where that thing meets, uh, the bevel in the front, that it's that it truly is not the bevel pointing down, and it's real, and it's not pointing up. It's pointing straight ahead, to the cutting piece. Right. That way, when you go and you start to use the chisel and you start pushing it along, you're not going in and gouging things out, or it's just you know bouncing and skipping across the surface. 
Right, right. So, chis- so John, so chisels, do you need a bench grinder? Can you do these with a stone? So I guess we, we never really talked about these. sharpening methods, but you can do it with a file. You can do it with a bench grinder. You can do it with uh, right. with a stone. It just depends on the levels. That's, but. that's, that's right. So the drills, obviously, from a, like a bench grinder. Um, but for chisels, I do it with a, um, with a metal file. Or I'll do it, you know, and I'll finish it up on a stone. So if I have a chisel, and matter of fact, I just had one, okay, and I just looked at it and I was like, wow, this thing is really, really got what I don't know what the hell I was doing with it. This really screwed up. So <laughs> I had a, I really had to dress it, dress it down. I had to, I had to really redo it flat across the the whole cutting surface, okay, and then uh, I filed down onto the bevel and onto the back. And it's, you know, like a razor now, and it's in the correct position. Um, And I can, you know, uh, polish that down on a a water stone. I might have a 6,000 grit water stone or, you know, some some leather. Uh, Just, you know, strop it just like a knife. And, you know, you can really get your chisels back in back in order. Well, awesome. All right. So let's, so let's talk about sharpening other stuff and let's talk about like, so I'm going to talk about one of my favorites cause I do this a lot. So if I'm out working in the, not so much in the yard, but if I'm doing a job, if I'm clearing brush, so I have a brush ax, right? And I have, well, I'm going to rephrase it. I have a brush ax. I have axes. I have a machete, um, you know, mm-hmm. living here in Atlanta, as you know, you get a lot of, you literally get brush and it's just, it's mostly little trees. It's really little tiny trees. And then a lot of vines like uh, iron, iron, whatever they call it, iron weed. That stuff's like freaking like literally mm-hmm. like iron. Um, so I have, I have a brush ax and I just take, I do it one of two ways. And th- th- so this is for use outside. This is not fine work. This is just basically hacking. But I will tell you when you're doing it via muscle power, back to that sharpen the saw or sharpen the axe really, really matters. And I just yeah. take a grind. I take one of two things. I have a grinding stone, like I have a regular bench grinder, or I have a, a, a hand gr- grinder too, just a four inch wheel on my grinder. And I will take those things. And I mean, I just put about a 45 degree angle on, but I mean, I get them razor yeah. sharp, man. They're razor sharp, but I just, I usually do it with the hand grinder because on my brush axe, it's pretty big. So the bench grinder is actually a little cumbersome, but I, and I do the same thing with my lawnmower blades by God, you know, although I'll balance, sure. I'll balance my lawnmower blades, yeah. but I take the four inch, I take the four inch, uh, um, grinder and I just run it down. I run it right down the edge until I see the yeah. metal coming off and I see shine and I actually can feel the edge, just like you're sharpening a knife or whatever you put your hand against, you know, you rub across yeah. it very lightly. Don't yeah. press on it across it and you'll feel that edge. Now, when I'm doing a brush X, I do both sides because I want that, I want that blade, the center, I want it right in the center. You know, this is just something that I'm swinging, throwing yes. it into the dirt three quarters of the time. So I generally do this before I start every single job. If I'm doing anything, I'm, I'm usually spending a, a good two or three hours and trust me sharp blade makes a huge difference yeah um so that's that's how i do my my yard tools even my my uh, lawnmower blades when i sharpen a lawnmower blade i take it off the machine i put it i put it up on a bench but i just put an edge on it you know and then i do balance that one because it's spinning at a higher rpm right. so I, I don't want it shaking my lawnmower apart um which is i have are you using are you using your uh, your angle grinder yeah just my four <laughs> yeah my four inch angle grinder Right. Yeah. I put a, yeah, I put a, a, that does a wonderful job. Even if, even if you're using, um, even if you have, uh, the, the sandpaper wheel on there. Yep. It'll help those kind of things because yep. the steel on what you're talking about it's is very not soft. A, yeah. It's not the, it's not the super high quality German steel you find on a Henkel knife. No, it's not. It's very, very soft steel. And it's actually, I, I actually, it, it's actually designed to actually dent instead of, instead yeah, of shatter, exactly. basically. So right. when you're, you know, when you're swinging the brush axe or you're driving your lawnmower through the lawn and you hit a stone, it doesn't destroy your blade. It just puts a great big dent in it. Well, right. you can take that dent out with your angle grinder. In, exactly. Kind of in well, basically in no time, and then it's back to being sharp, and your it, it makes your grass look better. It if you're it using certainly that, does. Yeah, you're using that brush axe, man, brother. That makes all the difference in the world. You'll get through that stuff so much faster when you sharpen it up. It's kind of here's a here's kind of a funny story. This so I was working at this place, and I had sharpened a, a, my brush axe. Right. Well, my brush axe has a hook on it. I don't know if folks know what mm-hmm. it is, but look it up. It's a kind of a sickle looking bar, but it sits on the end of like this axe handle, and it's this big wide blade, and it's got this kind of scimitar 
guitar type shape, but it's got a hook on the end. So anyway, I'm in the shop. I sharpen it up. This is when I was up at Riverbend and I'm, I sharpen this thing up, you know, and I mean, I've got this thing razor sharp. So I stick it up over my shoulder, right? Well, I didn't realize I had the hook end up. I go out the garage door and the hook catches the top of the garage door and it pulls it out of my hand. The next thing I know, I go, uh Oh, and that son of a gun had come down and cut the back of my ankle and it took seven stitches. That's how sharp that thing was. It took seven stitches to, to, to wire <laughs> yeah, me, be, to wire me be, back up. So <clears throat> point being, when we're out there, be careful when you're sharpening these tools and particularly when you're using them, because they, if they're sharp, they will cut you. I mean, I didn't even feel it. It was literally like, you know how a really sharp knife when it oh, cuts yeah. you, you're just like, uh Oh, you know yeah, what happened? Yeah. And, um, it, you know, I, I will tell you that the angle, you know, those little angle grinders are just wonderful for doing these things. Now, even if even when you're talking about uh, you, you're talking about out in the garden, you know, shovels, shovels, and, oh, and sharpen like your these. shovels every once in a while. <laughs> oh, my exactly. goodness. Exactly. Exactly. And those those little angle grinders, uh, they work great. It takes no time at all to to put an edge on on shovels or other other uh implements that you might use in the in the uh in the garden so you know we talked about drills uh chisels and um you know i hope we we answered that i mean we can we can talk about you know knives and things like that but you know well i think if we're going to talk about knives i think that's almost a whole nother show because there's people yeah. just dedicated out there to doing yeah to doing knives and stuff is there any other is there anything else besides knives that that we would talk about sharpening. I mean, we've talked about, uh, uh, you know, some of the art. Your mind. My mind? Yeah, sure. Wait, do I have one? Oh, I'm sorry. Just checking. Um, uh, I don't, I don't think of any of too much else, um, that I use that I do sharpen. I use that angle grinder. I do want to say angle grinder. So you can go buy one, you know, you can go to Harbor Freight or something and about 20 bucks and buy the four inch, you know, four inch grinders. That's about it. You and I both have the, have our cordless ones, which work really just as well. Um, they're a little more money. Um, but, uh, you don't have to put, this isn't a ton of money that you need to stick into a, to a grinder. So. To no, but those stuff. things really, you know, at one point we re nobody really had access to all those kind of things. I think every, you know, those things are around everyone everywhere now, and they just make uh, this kind of this kind of, uh, you know, these 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 kind of tasks very easy, very easy to do now. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, very very easy, and you know, anything else that you need to be sharpening. If we're, if we're missing something, it's basically the you know the same the same type of technique. Uh, for that um, just but just be aware you know from a drills and chisels it's it's more it, it's 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 more precision work uh, than uh, than you know your outdoor implements but of course you know there's all kinds of ways to do these things yep absolutely well john we want to remind people to go out and join our facebook group and join in the conversations or if you have a question for the handyman pros send us an email at questions at handyman pros radio show dot com and john the spaceship has landed. What are you going to do, John? Are you going to look at it? Or are you going to? Heck no. You're taking I, that bad boy it, apart, aren't you? I'm putting that thing up. I'm taking it apart. All right. Thanks for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this podcast and have derived some value from it, here's four things you can do. One, tell your friends about this podcast. Two, hit subscribe on your podcast player. While you're there, leave us a review. Three, subscribe to our newsletter by going to handymanprosradioshow.com and click on the subscribe button. We'll inform you of upcoming events, shows, and give you actionable tips for maintaining your home and property. And four, send us an email with your questions to questions at handymanprosradioshow.com. That's handymanprosradioshow.com. That's our show for this week. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show. Thank you.